All right, hey guys, Aquatic Bobs. Today's video, we're gonna be going over reef tank lighting. What type of lights I use, what par are my coral getting, what level of par should your coral be getting for the type of coral that it is, and I'm gonna give you some recommendations that you can use for your lights at home. So guys, first thing that we're going to go over today is what type of lighting are you using over your tank? Before we even get into the numbers with the PAR meter and what each coral needs and what's beneficial and, and what levels of blue, purple, white, whatever you need, first I want to ask you, what type of light are you using? If you're using a light that you think looks good but isn't recommended for coral, you're not going to get good results. I've, I've had this discussion with many people in the past and people buy that $100 48 inch strip light that says marine land on it and they say well it says it's for saltwater reef tanks and it's got a picture on the box of a bunch of super beautiful coral and I always have to break the bad news to people that light is not going to cut it. Maybe if you bought like a few of them and, and you just... But even, even the levels of blue, the nanometer range, you know, the 380 to 420 nanometer range, you're really not getting the best peak performance for those lights. So a few lights that I'll recommend right off the bat, and let me tell you guys this with a grain of salt, I know that it's expensive. I know it is. But if you're this far in the hobby and you're thinking about getting coral, you need to know the truth, you need to know what's going to work, and you need to know what's affordable. So I want to try to give you a little bit of both worlds, the best of both worlds. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so we ran out of recording time last night. We're going to pick up where we left off. And so we talked a little bit so far about what kind of light is actually going to work and those cheap lights just aren't worth it. But I want to just start with a few recommendations of two cheaper lights uh, that you can use over your tank that I've actually used that provide good results. The first is the one I probably recommend more is the Vpar Spectra Marine Black Box Light. I think right now it's like $130 on Amazon. There's some places that you can find them cheaper. Uh, it's usually has coupons on Amazon too. But these that I've I've used that light before. I used it on a 29 gallon aquarium that I had, and you really want to hang them up higher. So these lights are you know eight to ten inches. Those ones you can even hang up 16 to 18 inches off the water. And the reason why is number one, they're very bright and powerful, which is good. But number two is they don't blend the best. So the higher you hang it up, the more that it's going to blend better. You don't want a spotlight. Uh, certain colors all day on p parts of your coral uh, it's just not healthy for them so the Vpar Spectra the marine coral light uh, they have a lot of different lights make sure it's that one and I've used it like I said I recommend it the next one you're gonna get a kick out of this name but I'm using it down here right now it's the Smat Farm Coral Grow Light I think it's called Smat Farm S-M-A-T-F-A-R-M also sold on Amazon, it's like $110. And this one is fully programmable. Like, oh, okay, so the VPAR Spectra, it's got different channels. You can program them to come on and off at different times of the day. Uh, so it's a set it and forget it. You can have all blue, you can have blue and white, or you can just have white. Uh, and then it does have gr green and red spectrum in there too, violet and purple. And, but this one has, I think, six channels. Each one, you can turn up the intensity, you can program them to come on and off at different times. And let me just show you. It does a pretty good job. These corals have been under this light since I got it a few months ago. And I, I honestly, I can't really tell the difference between how they look with this light versus being under all these lights up here with you know higher reviews and more people say that they're better but this lights new and man it's really doing a good job I put my hand under there it's hot 
but it does have a fan on the top too and it's pretty nice pretty comparable to the ai hydras to tell you the truth so those are a couple of cheaper options that i can recommend for you most of you guys know about the higher end higher quality lights the ai hydras the ecotech radions uh, my son's ready to get up in the background there and a lot of you guys know about those one last recommendation that i'm going to make is the aquatic life t5 hybrid t5 led hybrid light so what it is is it's the it's got two t5 strips on each side and then you can connect your leds in the middle so it's basically one big fixture and it comes with brackets so you can connect your leds in between and then you get the best of both worlds uh, very very much talked up because it works it's a good light especially if you use the right bulbs i, pr I recommend blue plus bulbs maybe some coral plus uh, by ATI so those are a few good options uh, check them out do a little research figure out what you need what's gonna be best for you and and do it follow through with it stick with it so what a difference lighting can make let me show you just even like background lighting but lighting is very important in a reef tank and 95 percent of the corals that we keep in our systems are photosynthetic and that means that they get about 80 percent of their food from lighting uh, and their energy their health 80 percent comes from lighting the other 20 percent comes from uh, eating food from the water phytoplanktons maybe meat depending on the coral some some eat small fish and invertebrates uh, but yeah so lighting makes a huge difference to your corals health and color overall and so without going through a very slow painful demonstration of using my par meter here and measuring all the spots in my tank I'm just gonna kinda show you guys what numbers I came up with and so let me let me just kind of point on the screen to the area and give kind of the general i've done it a few times now so it's really stuck in my mind i'll give you the general level of par and remember so when your lights ramp down in the evening your par is going to be lower than what it is when all your lights are on during full daylight spectrum so right now these two frag racks right here and right here both get about 150 par a little bit higher especially where the hammers and and uh, euphelia are on the back of that rack it's about 175 and coming to this part of the tank uh i got mushrooms and some macros it's about 175 par so these guys uh, before when all the lights come on they get about 150 par which is maybe a little low for bubble tips but definitely acceptable for them and over to these racks the top rack here is 150 par again and the bottom rack is about 110 par uh, further towards the glass it gets shaded a little bit from this rack and it's actually only about 70 to 80 par uh, so let's go up to uh, the top of the tank so the top of the tank uh, this middle rock gets about the most it's about 415 par coming off to the sides here and over to the edge and from about here and over to the edge there 350 par pretty even on both sides and that's because they're all it's all the lighting is hung symmetrically above my tank so it's gonna be pretty close as long as they're on the same level it's gonna be really close uh, moving down to kind of the middle front of the tank through here a couple more acros down into there and even a little bit on these rocks uh, those are a little bit lower but that middle section of my tanks about 250 to 275 Coming down to the Euphelia rock down here, about 175. And most of the sand bed in the tank, almost everywhere, is about 150. So it's a little on the high end for LPS. You'll notice that all my LPS are on the bottom. The bottom 
third of the tank pretty much and all my SPS are on the top third of the tank and I do a little bit of blending in the middle because of space and some coral can tolerate a little bit higher light but that's a general rule to keep in mind general not 100% specific but SPS like higher light LPS lower light so what's high light and what's low light high light is 200 to 350 par uh, bulk reef supply does some really good videos on explaining that low light is 50 to 125 150 par and that mid range is you know 125 to 200 par that's mid range so the cool thing about it is most LPS are can generally be grouped in that low light category. Most SPS can generally be grouped in the high light category. Uh, there are a few exceptions. Digitata on the back middle there, Montipora on the back wall. Uh, they can do middle of the road lighting, so 150 to 200 power is good for them. Uh, another cool one example is Trachophilia. Trachees can even do 200 par. I mean, this guy, he really gets hit hard here. And like 175, and he, he does really well. Even torches have a acceptable, little bit higher range. You can see how well these guys are doing. And really nice fluorescence, especially when the lights go blue. And when it's all blue. And it's just so beautiful, so cool to come home after a long day of work and just be able to sit in front of the tank and just enjoy it. Just super, super peaceful, super enjoyable. My whole family loves it. Everybody that comes over loves it. And that aesthetic appeal, it's, it's all with the eyes, right? It's what we see. I hope I used the right words there. <laughs> Got a lot on my mind. It's hard when you're taking a video and trying to get good shots of the coral. It's hard to do that at the same time as talking and thinking, unless you're a very good multitasker. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of what the par level is for my tank. A lot of common questions are, what's a good par for A-cans? A-cans, I've, I've seen some people keep them in as low as 50 to 60 par. I prefer right around 100 if I could, but because my tank is so heavily mixed, it's it's hard to really get a good balance. And again, that's why I tilt my lights. If I kept them straight and flat, the sand bed would probably get closer to 200 par. Um, but A-cans are a good one. I would say 75 up to 125. And if you acclimate them over time, you can even get as high as 150. Uh, but you're going to start seeing some differences in coloration, and I think lower light for A-cans helps keep some of those mixed colors visible. So when you get them in higher light and lower nutrients, you're going to start seeing the colors all blend together and become kind of just one or two colors instead of being able to see those many different colors in the A-can. Um, Acropora good example of SPS Acropora and Millipora uh, both and if, if you work your way up to it you can acclimate them over time you can even hit them with 500 par if you want but I think they'll be just fine in that 250 to 350 range um, and again if you just buy a coral and say you get one from Worldwide Corals as an example and you throw it in your tank and just start blasting it right away at 350, 400 par, it's probably going to struggle big time, if not die. I would strongly recommend any new coral, all coral, start it low. Start it low in the sand bed, work your way up. Slowly bring it up in your tank. Let it get acclimated, let it get used to your water parameters. Because it's not just getting used to the light, right? It's also getting used to your salinity your pH, your alkalinity, your magnesium, calcium, iodine, like it, it's got a lot of adjusting to do. You can't just expect it to 
be thrown into your tank and just do well just like it was in the tank in the system that it came from. So just keep that in mind when adding new coral to your system. Give it a little time to settle in. Kind of like the first day of school, right? You're going to a new school. It's your first day. You don't just jump in and know everybody and everything goes great on the first day. I mean, things can go great, but <clears throat> it takes a little bit of time to warm up to people. It takes a little bit of time for coral to warm up to your system. So be patient and be smart. Have a plan. Do it the right way. Okay, so the final thing I just want to touch on is what... What does it look like if my coral is getting too much light or too little light? So the number one effect of too much light is bleaching. Your coral will bleach out. It'll become very pale and this is kind of a good example right there. So I had to lower my lights recently and you can see some of that pink and purple coming back into it, but it got very bright very bright and I think it was from a lack of nutrients but also an abundance of light so that's one of the major effects too much light can kill corals quickly quickly let me show you another example I had to move this guy up to the side over here see how he's bleached out half of it is is looks good and the top half looks bad too much light way too much light so LPS can bleach quickly. It's always better to start with lower light and, and let your coral get used to it and adjust it and acclimated than to just blast them. Because too little light, they can handle that for a longer period of time than too much light. I'm going to show you this really quick. So, see that little bounce coming out of this chalice? That thing just started growing there like a week ago. When the water blasts on it, it actually wiggles. There you can see it a little bit. If I can stop wiggling. Pretty cool. Keeps growing too, so I'm kind of curious to see how much of a bounce chalice this becomes. <laughs> but, uh... So yeah, too little light is, it's better, uh, you have more time to react and respond versus too much light. Uh, it's like sticking your head out the window while you're driving 80 miles down the highway. Too much light is like trying to breathe with your head out the window, right? <laughs> it, it's hard, it's difficult, and it can cause some problems quickly. They can really fly up on you. So, uh... Another, another factor of too much light is, and, and I know some people like this, is excessive growth. Like, that's, that's actually a good thing. Growth in coral is a good thing. So look at the tips of this guy here. He gets a lot of light, and I see a lot of growth with him. Now the thing about growth is you need nutrients to keep up with the growth. So if your nutrients are lower in your system, you have low nitrates, no phosphates, and you don't feed much, but you have high lighting, you're going to run into some scientific issues with your coral. And the reason I say scientific is because I don't really understand the whole process of it. I just know by experience that I had high light and low nutrients, and I started running into a lot of issues. Your coral loses color, it loses health, Okay guys, and then finally, too little of light. So too little of light really doesn't have a huge consequence, especially right away. I mean, by the time you start to notice a change in your coral, it can be easily corrected. So again, I know I've said it a few times, too little of light is far better than too much light. But just remember that the coral does eat from the light. That's essentially what happens, uh, the photosynthesis. So. It's just like outside, if plants get starved of light, they won't grow. But they can still grow even if it's been cloudy out for two weeks straight. So, But if the sun's blasting on them, I mean, there's a lot more requirements and the heat of the sunlight. So uh, a lot of good analogies here to learn from and to remember. So just remember, guys, uh, Everything about this hobby screams research and experience. 
So just because we research a lot doesn't mean that, that we have everything that we need because we still need the experience. And just because we have some experience doesn't mean we really understand or know everything that we're doing. And sometimes we're missing out on a lot because we haven't done research. So the two go hand in hand with each other. And it's, it's important to remember that. So enjoy, enjoy what we have and let's take care of it. And let's continue to appreciate this together. So thanks guys. Aquatic Bob's out.